Here are five pieces of information that you must know for the Chem Regents exam when it comes to the periodic table. So, first one. You have three, well, you have more than that, but you have classifications for elements. You have your metals, metalloids, nonmetals, and noble gases. So, when you look at the periodic table, remember, you have your metals comprise most of the table. Then, your semi-metals or metalloids are here. There are six elements. Boron, silicon, arsenic, and tellurium, germanium, and antimony. You need to know those, that those six have properties of both metals and nonmetals. That's why they're known as semi-metals or metalloids. Then, on the right, we have our non-metals. And as a group, they have special properties. And, of course, along or a subset in the nonmetals are the noble gases that do not want to react with anything. While we're on the subject here, you need to know phases of elements at room temperature. And what do we have? We have hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, and of course our noble gases that are all gases. Most of you should know already, but in case you don't, Mercury is the only liquid metal, and bromine is the only liquid non-metal. The rest are solids. Let's go back. Okay, all of the elements on the periodic table are arranged according to atomic number. Remember, atomic number is your number of protons. It's the only subatomic particle that gives an element its identity. That is the atomic number. And maybe you can hear Jake, the little toxin who's crying in the background, because, of course, he wants to bug us while we try to learn about the periodic table. Number three. Of course, a column of elements have simil similar chemical properties because they contain the same number of valence electrons. So if we go back to our periodic table and let us erase all of the ink. Remember our group numbers one tells us we have all one valence electron that's the outermost electrons group two it's two then of course we have the transition and the inner transition so let's move over to 13 through 18 just drop the number one in front group 13 is three valence electrons 14 is 4, 15 is 5, 16 is 6, 17 is 7, and of course 18 other than helium is 8. Helium, the magic number, is 2. If we go back, let's see. Periodic table, you can't talk about periodic table without talking about trends. You need to know trends for the elements as you go across any row also known as a period on the periodic table. Okay, so trends this way and then trends top to bottom in a particular group. Typically trends include metallic properties, valence electrons, and then electronegativity, ionization, energy, and atomic radius. Atomic radius, electronegativity, and ionization energies are all here on reference table S. So, if you're asked about a trend, you could pick out elements, either going down a group or across, and look up the values, look up at least three or four, either across or down, and you'll see is the trend increasing or decreasing. There's only one where it remains the same, and we just talked about that. Valence electrons, as you go down a group, remain the same. When we're dealing with trends, Though, let me tell you, we are dealing with the group 1 and 2s, and then 13 through 18. That's where we look at trends, not the middle of the table again. Okay, um, so don't forget reference table S. This is vital. While we're on the subject, reference table S also gives us physical properties for elements. Notice we have the atomic number with the symbol and the name spelled correctly. 
for the elements. All right, the last one here. Top five piece of information you have to remember for the chemistry regions that two or more forms of the same element can have different structures, and if they're different structures, they're different properties. These are described as allotropes, although usually the, the questions don't ask you about the word allotrope. They ask you about this information. So, for example, oxygen is O2 or ozone, O3. They fall under the two or more forms of the same element. Different structures, different properties. Of course, you know carbon, for example, as graphite, or carbon, of course, as diamond. They are comprised of carbon atoms, but because of the different structure, they have different properties. Write these down for yourself. You have pieces of information here you need to know. Memorize them, work on questions, watch other videos, and good luck.